So welcome from my side. I think everybody is already in from the waiting room. Uh, so um, welcome to Game City Hamburg's second Game Starter event. Um, we, we can we can start our survey here again because we also would like a little bit more about you who's attending here. Um, perfect. Now it's running. So. My name is Dennis and I'm the project lead of Game City Hamburg and I'm also your host for today. So before we are jumping into our topic today, um, game art, let's get some housekeeping stuff out of the way. So um, we assume that most of you will be fami familiar with, with Zoom nowadays, um, but also some words here and also some, some tips. Um, so what we will do, we will uh, record this Zoom session. So if you don't want to be on the video afterwards, uh, please turn, out, uh, turn off your camera. And also um, please keep your microphone muted for most of the time, so because we are uh, some some people here, um, that, that's always a good idea. But at the same time, um, you are more than welcome to ask your questions uh, during this session. So the first way for this would be the chat that you simply type in your chat and then uh, we will uh, read it out for you. But you can also give us a sign in the chat or also raise your hand. And then we can also uh, activate your microphone that you can uh, speak to us, um, talk with us, and also share your question there. And as I said, we really appreciate it if you would turn on your camera because it's uh, nicer for us to not look into like a dark black void, but seeing some some uh, uh, happy faces here. Um, but at the same time, it's also completely fine if you choose to turn uh, your camera off. And also one tip in the beginning, um, if you're going to our website, Game City Hamburg, um, directly at the front page, you will find the link to our Discord server. And on our Discord server, we also have a dedicated channel for this Game Starter event. So also feel free to connect with other participants there. Also feel free to share your portfolios after there. Or you can also uh, ask questions. So check our Discord out. And also one last thing I wanted to mention, if you have uh, trouble or troubles or questions um, by using Zoom, uh, please also feel free to, to use the chat and let us know um, how we can help there. So for today's schedule, um, we are middle in uh, my welcoming words. Um, and what we will do right now is that we, uh, before we will jump into our game art topic, um, we would like to share some update with you about the latest program of Game City Hamburg, which we are uh, gonna start right now. So Game City Hamburg is funded by the city of Hamburg and um, we are here to support the local games industry. And one important aspect for us is also the promotion of young talent. So we don't only want to do this with the Game Start event, but also with our new incubation program, what we will launch this year. And this new games incubator is called Games Lift. Actually, you can apply right now until Julie 22nd to be part of the Games Lift incubator. And at this point, I would like to introduce my colleague Maggie, uh, who will give you some insights what our incubation program is all about. So let's jump to the Games Lift Incubator. Yes. Hello, game artists. Um, yeah, as Dennis said, I will give you a brief uh, introduction into our new program, the Games Lift Incubator, which might be interesting for some of you. So um, the Games Lift Incubator um, is a program um, by Game City Hamburg, which is intended to support young developer teams um, in realizing their ideas and projects by supporting them with uh, financial support, with um, a wide range of workshops, coaching programs and mentoring. And also we will provide uh, uh, co-working spaces for you to work in. Um, Dennis, would you um, skip the presentation for? 
Yes, thank you. Um, uh, this is intended for um, all teams, um, development teams, student teams, maybe startups or people who are in the process, uh, process of founding an, uh, their own company. Um, uh, the, the teams should not be bigger than five people. So five pe people is the maximum. And also all team members should be available for the workshop program, um, which will be during the three months um, uh, time of the incubator will be around one or two days per week during this time. So uh, what exactly does the incubator offer? As I mentioned, there will be a workshop and coaching program from experienced industry professionals. Um, there will also be an expense allowance of up to 15,000 euro that you can use during your time um, in the incubator. We will encourage interdisciplinary uh, networking in between the teams and um, we hope we can provide all of that in a co-working space. Um, this, of course, depends on the corona situation at that time, but we will find a solution for that. Um, regarding the workshop, pro workshop program, we have a pretty wide range. Um, we will cover topics of game development, of course, but also more business focused um, topics like how to find out about your project's market potential. If you want to found a company, how to create a business plan um, and what else uh, is important to know if you want to found a company and basic issues of project management and many, many more. So if you are interested um, and want to know when it happens, um, you can apply right now until July 27th. So you have 20 more days uh, to apply. Um, and the program itself will start in September, will run for 13 weeks until early December and end with a great uh, final pitch where you can present your, your project's progress during those three months. So if you want to apply, and um, or you are just interested and want to find out more about it, just head to our website, gamecityhamburg.de funding. You will find all the information that I showed here and much more um, on the funding page. And as Dennis said, um, also join our Discord ser server if you haven't done so yet, um, because there you can ask any questions about the incubator, about anything else regarding Game City Hamburg. And yeah, we're looking forward to your applications. Thank you very much, Maggie. So um, this is really our latest uh, service offer here with the Gameslift Incubator. So please feel free to check it out on our website to get more information there. And I'm not also joined by my colleague Maggie, but also with my three more colleagues, Anna, Annika, and René. And what they will do is that they will scan the chat all the time. So please, um, from the beginning, this should be like an interactive discussion round here. Please feel free to uh, yeah, ask your questions at any time here. And what I would like to do now is to have a look on our survey. So we wanted to know how much do you already know about uh, the professional approach to game art? So yeah, it's like uh, we, we have some game artists here um, also uh, some which have worked on first projects and also some some newcomers. So that's a good mixture we have here. And we are looking forward to cover all your questions during the session. So. Okay. All right, so um, before we will get uh, to our panel discussion here, um, let's say uh, some words about uh, what we will have on our agenda later. So as I said, uh, QA basically is all the time, um, but we will also end with a little QA round there. And after our QA round, we're aiming for like four to past seven. Um, then we would go into um, the portfolio checks. And so this will be then the option if you uh, bought a own portfolio and we are aware of uh, right now eight artists which contacted us before. Um, then we will split up the group in some breakout sessions. So you can imagine like three smaller Zoom calls and then in every Zoom call there's one expert checking out the portfolios. 
And so if you uh, would like to also add your portfolio to the list, then please feel free to stay uh, after our discussion round and simply um, yeah, get, use the chance to get some feedback also on your portfolio. So this is what we uh, have planned with you today. And um, this brings me to the question, so what really is the idea behind the game starter? And for us, um, it is like when we talk to, to career starters and also to companies in Hamburg, um, there's often the case that like expect uh, expectations might be on a different level. So like if you're a company, you have certain expectations. If you hire somebody and also if you're starting into a professional work as game artist, you also have like your own idea. How would uh, the work life look like and also what is needed uh, to be successful in the industry? So we think it's a good option to simply talk about it and uh, to get information firsthand. So this is really the reason why we have our three expert, uh, experts here. And also, uh, I cannot stress it enough. So when you're going like online and you're looking at the GDC vault or whatever, um, yeah, like website um, you're on, there are like a lot of great talks out there, but please really uh, see it as a chance to, to ask your personal questions during this session. And uh, we really try to cover all of them here. And so before I will uh, introduce the experts to you, uh, we also would like to know uh, something more about you. So I would like to bring up our second survey here. But I can't. I don't know why, but I can't at the moment. So uh, maybe maybe uh, my colleagues will figure out a way that we can uh, launch the second survey. Um, so let's, let's go on. Ah, yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. So please feel free to, to also answer this there. And I will go on here and jump uh, to our three industry professionals. And so we are very happy to, to have them here for, for uh, today's discussion. And um, yeah, so let's start uh, with you, Stefan. So welcome here. And uh, I would like to know from you, uh, for which company are you working for? And what is the latest project or the last project uh, you're working on? Yeah, first, Dennis, thanks for having me today. So uh, I'm working at Deep Silver Fish Labs at the moment as a senior 3D artist. And our current project is uh, the recently announced Chorus, which will be out for Xbox, PlayStation, and uh, PC soon. OK. Perfect. Then uh, let's go on. Uh, hi, Denise. Thank you for being here. So please also share the information with us uh, for which company are you working for and what is the project you're currently working on? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm Denise. I work at Tivola as a, a 3D artist and uh, the project I'm working on is quite new, so I'm uh, not allowed to say anything about it, but uh, what I can say is it's another uh, cute animal project with horses and uh, it's for mobile, yeah. Okay, so like uh, early stage uh, in development process there. Um, and also, um, the third expert here in uh, our round is Sören. And Sören, you're working as a freelance uh, game artist. So I would like to know from you, are you working for specific companies? And also, can you share the latest or last projects uh, you have worked on? Yeah, thanks for having me as well. Hi, my name is Sören. Thanks for the introduction. Um, Bad luck, I am not allowed to tell you uh, on which project I am working right now as well. And as a concept artist, um, you tend to work sometimes in the pre-production. That means maybe I can tell you in, in about three years <laughs> what I'm working on right now. I have uh, actually not uh, specific companies I work for. It's more, um, I work for one big uh, outsourcing company or art outsourcing company 
and they have they form uh, for specific tasks they form specific task forces and uh, sometimes my style might fit on a project and then i work on them on, on, on the tasks they they give me but i also work for board games uh, for fantasy books or other stuff and what what was the last announced project you worked on um in, in video was, games actually there was ghost recon breakpoint a little funny story i was uh, i didn't know actually <laughs> that i was working on ghost recon um I, after because uh, everything is so uh, filled with ndas so i cannot couldn't talk a lot and also the briefings i got were very uh, cryptic so yeah after the launch uh, or the I, actually i think it was the release they told me ah yeah you've been working on ghost recon breakpoint <laughs> that okay. was quite funny <laughs> okay I, I i like that idea um that you're not working on which cohen project um so also like that that basically it was a question i had in mind to bring up later but it fits so perfectly now so um you're talking about like then concept art right like in the beginning really of a project um but if you're not aware like basically what project or what ip you're working on so how can it be like a consistent art style so what is the briefing like okay this is this is very important but we are not gonna tell you what the what the game is basically i don't know the whole truth uh, of course i am just one single artist and uh, just imagine the um the ubisoft studios they they are pretty crowded a lot of people work there and i could imagine that they not only asked my outsourcing company no it's not my company but the outsourcing company i work for um they asked many other companies as well And I think this is due to the reason that you can have a, a much bigger variety in creativity. You can have different um, influences or styles and then you just cherry pick. So that's, uh, that's I think an advantage of being very flexible and have a, have a small team. Mm -hmm. But of course I have not, I cannot deliver the manpower uh, in the main production phase where you just need to produce assets i cannot compete as a as a freelancer with mm -hmm. studios mm -hmm. and also to uh, like uh, get a step back and also um, yeah we talked about in the introduction round denise you're working for tivola right now so did you had any special training or did you go to a certain university before you enter like the games industry uh yeah i um Uh, before I started uh, working in the games industry, I was at the Games Academy in Berlin um, doing the digital artist course. Yeah, um, and then after that, I, I really got a job quite quick. Mm -hmm. And um, what was like is the first uh, job you had? Like, was it uh, already like a junior art position or something else? Yeah. Or was it an internship? Luckily, I got the uh, junior position at Tivola. Um, I now work for Tivola again. Um, in between, I worked for the Delic, but yeah, I'm back at Tivola now. Um, yeah, I got really lucky and I didn't make any internship. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's like, uh, yeah, perfect that uh, you managed to get in there. But also from what I hear, like internships often is like the first step mm -hmm. into into the industry. Um, but it's always, uh, yeah, good luck to, to enter like at a higher position. And also when talking about what companies are based in Hamburg, like you already mentioned, Dedelic. And Dedelic is also well known for, for yeah, like lots of, Uh, good games with great art styles and also very story driven and this is also a similarity uh, with you Stefan right you also worked before Deep Silver Fish Lift uh, you also worked for Videlic at some point yeah I started I think uh, about 10 years ago uh, I started at Videlic as a 2D artist and then I shifted my career more and more to a, towards a 3D artist and yeah I, I did many great games with, with Videlic it's, it's a Great company, man. 
Yeah, and uh, what what was the latest project you worked on uh, for Data Lake? Uh, the latest project, uh, I was art director on State of Mind. That was a, a futuristic sci-fi thriller by Martin Guntefer. Yeah. So, so um, I'm, I'm not uh, completely sure if everybody um, here in, in our call is aware of the art style of uh, uh, State of Mind. Uh, you definitely should be. Um, but at the same time, it's like, for me, it's a very interesting art style because it's like a low poly look, right? Uh, please say uh, if it's called uh, other way, but I, I, I would define it as like low poly look. And um, so um, I, I know that we talked about it a little bit before. Was this like a mixture in the decision to say like, okay, we have to create lots of assets with a rather small team or was it like, only the, the artistic vision to say like this fits our story in the best way. So can you share some, some infos there? Yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, of course you can call it low poly look. It it's, uh, was a decision when Martin Guntefer back in the days, he came to me and uh, we talked about the, uh, the project he had in mind and uh, I knew right from the beginning, oh, whoa, this is huge what he's planning. And we also knew, oh, we will only be uh, uh, a handful of artists uh, at Max, so we we said, okay, uh, I made, I proposed this to him. Let's let's do it uh, low poly, so we can build an asset in low poly. We don't do any high poly, low poly baking, uh, and we throw it right into the engine and do some shader magic there, and so we can be pretty fast with a very small team. And then we uh, decided to pick the Unreal Engine as our uh, game engine. And uh, this were also was also my first project with the Unreal Engine. Yeah, and uh, this game got shipped later on Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch, PC, Mac, I think. Yeah, but it was it was a decision, uh, an economic decision, uh, because we were, uh, I think, two or three three D artists uh, at high peak times in this project, and we had to deliver like. 60, 63 backgrounds, if I have it, if I get it right. So it was a huge mm. game with a very small team, but we don't want, want it to uh, make it look small or like, like an indie title. We wanted to look at, yeah, more A, double A-ish, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I also played the game and I, I think it was a very a good decision because it also like wings like a certain atmosphere uh, like to it. So I, I really liked it. Um, Zurit, um what about you? Because, uh, before you um, became like a freelance artist, so did you also have like some stops at uh, game companies before? Yeah, so um, I was a graphic designer before, um, but yeah, pretty late I figured out that there is actually something like concept art, <laughs> um, because it's not uh, you've, you will not be told in the school that there is something like this. So I figured that out and then I thought, you know, I want to uh, work in a game company. Then I applied for, felt like 150 times, actually I think it was nine times, I guess. Also for Hamburg-based companies, I think four or five uh, applications in two years. And then I decided to send one application to my favorite uh, German game, which was Anno. I don't know if the German-based uh, chat, uh, the chat community will know the game, I think. So I applied there and it worked. So I started an intern there and uh, yeah, I just see it in the chat, Anno, yeah, good. So uh, that, was, uh, that was a very big milestone personally for me. So I moved to Mainz, made my internship as they had a headcount, I kept on working for them in-house as a freelance guy. So that was pretty cool. But mm -hmm. Mainz is not Hamburg, so <laughs> at some that's, point I moved back. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a good quote for today, Mainz is not Hamburg. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, yeah, it's true. Like, um, I'm also only aware of like uh, Ubisoft Blue Byte um, in, in Mainz. Maybe there are some smaller ones, but like this is yeah, really yeah, the good thing about Hamburg that there is like this variety in, in companies and also like you have the chance if you're in the industry maybe as game artists that you also have like a lot of options and then you can decide okay 
would I like to move on to work on other projects, whatever. Um, and what I also really like is that you brought something for today. Um, I would like to share right now here my screen. Um, sure. And this is the idea to do, do, do I have to ask you, do you see? Um, I see okay. it. I think okay. the rest sees it oh. as well. <laughs> Okay, okay, perfect. If we too can see it, then we can uh, talk about it. It's perfect. Um, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about the process. Um, yeah, you take if you got like your briefing and then it's like um, blah, blah, blah. You have to do this and we want to have it like tomorrow. Um, so what are the next steps then? What, what are you going to do? Yeah. So um, actually, I think in the world of concept art, there are also different different tasks, need different uh, different approaches. But one, uh, the most time consuming or energetic energy con consuming part, at least in my opinion, is drawing. So drawing takes a lot of time, and especially in the beginning of a in the beginning of a of a yeah in, of a pre-production or of a game or of a design phase. It's not always needed to already invest a lot of energy and time on these matters. So my theory of whole, this whole thing is that there is an art director or client or whatever, and he has a special vision in his head. So me as a concept artist, when I have to paint, for example, a building, then I can paint it by myself, like I want it, but the possibility is pretty high that the art director will say, nah, can you put the, maybe a tower, maybe put it to the left, put it to the right. And I always do these research sheets, which you see here, um, like pretty often, almost always, before I start to draw or start to design a thing. So these sheets uh, help a lot to, um, to, to make the art director and the concept artist uh, speak with the same tongue. You know uh, what I mean? Like uh, that you have your, you, because we share the same visual library. If I uh, tell you, mm, do you remember that scene from Lord of the Rings where mm, 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 everybody will uh, understand and uh, can follow this, this uh, yeah, visual path. So mm -hmm. this, for example, is uh, for actually Ghost Recon. And it's uh, the very first iteration for a seed vault. And it's just Googled images. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And so then, like, uh, as next step, uh, you also send this here. Exactly. Um, so these so are some interior concepts, um, as you see, uh, heavily inspired by some server architecture. Um, and uh, so the, the, on the previous sheet, uh, we decide which direction we want to go. And then afterwards, uh, we, we follow that direction a little, mm -hmm. a little deeper. Mm -hmm. So and that was the direction the client or the art director wanted me to go. So then I proposed some ideas. And then finally, uh, he liked the, the simple one, the one to the left most. And then you just... Uh, you, well, just <laughs> um, iterate around until you have uh, the the outer appearance. Maybe if you just can skip a frame. Yeah, so there you have the, the end result in the game. I actually never played Ghost Recon, uh, oops. <laughs> but so I Googled that one uh, to, to see how it actually looks. But on the right, you see the level of detail. There, there can be more detail there can be a higher finish to it but i felt or we felt that this was uh, that this sold the idea uh, mm -hmm. best so that's okay. the final ponce pieces you see on the right and uh, denise is this also like a typical approach for you so uh, are you going to the google image search often or do you have like other sources where you like yeah doing like the first research um, yeah, it, I mean, it depends on the asset I, I'm going to make. 
Um, but yeah, often it's it's the first step to uh, look around what what have other artists done and uh, what references can I use and try try things out. Yeah. Hmm. And um, Stefan, also maybe like uh, the, the project you're working on right now, like it's a space shooter. So like it's a lot about making spaceships looking very cool, but at the same time uh, you want to have like a own identity. So say like, okay, this is like a typical spaceship we gonna make. Like how many spaceships do you have to Google to talk with your colleagues before you know like this is a direction we gonna go like between Star Wars and everything else what's what's out there. Yeah, that, that's a tough one. Uh, and it always depends. So uh, if you have a strong vision right from the beginning or if you have to uh, find an idea first. So, but I would say we did tons of reference searching uh, also together with the team and uh, also a lot of concept iteration on different factions for the game, for example, let's say we have a faction and we want to develop it further, then we first do some mood boards, uh, do some first rough concept arts and then refine them, rework, uh, continue working on them until we mm. are happy with the result, yeah. Mm. But it's, it's tons and tons of iteration, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I guess so. so. Um, and it, maybe if we're going to like, what's, is there any kind of like day-to-day -day working routine? So, um, Denise, do you, would, would you say like, um, maybe a question, um, how much of your day is actually drawing? Drawing? Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm a 3D artist, so I'm not drawing that often. Um, if it comes to, yeah, more like a concept phase and I don't have a concept around a 2D concept, I, uh, yeah, do more 3D blocking. So actual drawing is really, I, I, I don't draw. <laughs> I really yeah, don't draw. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's everything I do is, um, is uh, th uh, 3D. And even if I have to make concepts as a 3D, maybe a, a little overpaint, but it's it's really rare when mm. I draw. And um, you're working with Unity at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you say, like, do you feel like in the day-to-day -day routine, do you have like, can you work like eight hours in, in, in like Unity on, on, on the asset? Or do you feel like, okay, like a routine could be, um, you, you do it in the morning, then you have like, meetings and then um, can you share some insights there if there's anything like a typical day for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I create my assets in other programs. Unity is uh, just the, the game engine um, where I implement good, good, the assets. Good that I can learn also <laughs> so much today. So that's that's perfect. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I mean, it depends on the asset, how much work I spend um, on it. But um, working in Unity is a small part, I would say. Um, it's just implementing and applying the material and maybe level, level art. Um, yeah, but the, the, I don't know, if, if I do a, a small asset, it's, it's maybe one hour with this asset that I spend in Unity. It's more like, uh, I don't know, um, 3D code for texturing or uh, 3D SMX for modeling and unwrapping. Um, there I spend most of the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stefan, uh, so do you have any kind like of a job routine? Like uh, um, basically there, there is a stand up meeting and then you're going to, to work on the CoM project or can you share some insights there? Yeah. Uh... Of course, in the morning, there's always a stand up to see if there are any issues, but it's very, very short. It's usually in the art team, in the art, depart art department, it's like five minutes. Uh, hey, guys, what are you working on? How is it going? And uh, when it comes to my day-to-day uh, -day job, I would say uh, it's always depends on the project and on the face in the project. So uh, I love to draw a lot in my uh, free time, also at work. Uh, so sometimes uh, if someone comes to me, hey, we need an idea for blah, blah, blah. Then I, then I do some napkin sketches, for example. And uh, then uh, I do some very rough concepts, not, not like uh, 
Zirin, for example, because uh, I'm not a concept artist, but it's enough to sell the idea sometimes. And yeah, then uh, like Denise mentioned, uh, throwing some block outs in the game to see if everything works uh, from the proportions, all the functions are there. And what I also utilize uh, a lot in the last few years is like uh, virtual reality for, for doing uh, stuff, uh, block outs in 3D and virtual reality because it's very, very fast actually, yeah. Mm. Um, maybe uh, now where you brought this topic up, I would like to share also my, my screen once again here because I also found it so so interesting. So what we are seeing right now are like several different uh, spaceship models and um, we already talked about it briefly and you told me that all of them which we are seeing right now you you did like basically in virtual reality, right? Exactly. So the directors, we, we already had like a, a few uh, versions of the player ship in the game but the directors, uh, they were asking for another iteration so uh, I, I uh, picked the VR glasses and uh, started to sketch them in Gravity Sketch. That's a 3D software uh, for VR. And so we could uh, throw them in the game immediately. Like uh, with, within uh, a few hours, we had a new ship in the game. We could test it. Uh, it was not uh, animated or something, but we could at, at least get a first impression of the ship. Yeah, and uh, after that, uh, I refined it even in VR and had my uh, block out my base mesh already for my 3D application of choice. So it's, mm. it's a very, very fast uh, process because you you start with a block out, can throw it in the game, can test it and continue with, with a, a base mesh. Mm. Mm. As Zürin, do, do you see any point uh, in, like in the future, like uh, using VR also for like 2D um, drawings? Uh, is there anything like um, faster um, movement, whatever? Well, yeah, that's a good, very good question. <laughs> um, in most recent projects, I also tend to, uh, t tend to sketch in 3D already. Um, so I just use uh, Blender or something, something, something similar. And Stefan just mentioned VR. So some time ago, I uh, uh, I purchased purchased one uh, for for me, and I tried Gravity Sketch, but I um, didn't have the energy to to step into it deeper. But like I saw it right now, and it's uh, it's a great tool to enhance your creativity to see things from different angles and one thing like one weakness of uh, 2d is that it's static <laughs> so i cannot change directions of light uh, form size whatever it's uh, everything is flat it mm. makes it much faster at some phase but <laughs> I have never asked myself that questions, but I could imagine in 15 years that we, uh, what do you need a 2D painting for? <laughs> I could imagine, but yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Yeah, one so, of the benefits for, for VR sketching, for example, maybe Zeren, you, you should give it another try. So uh, the most 3D applications, they need a lot of time to uh, get used to and uh, like Blender needs some time to learn it or ZBrush leads, I think, even more time to learn it uh, in the beginning, at least. Uh, and for, for VR sketching, uh, there are programs like Medium, which I can uh, recommend to everybody because Medium is like, you don't need no expertise uh, up front. You can jump right in. There are just, I don't know, 10, 20 functions that you will use. And uh, that is one of my most favorite uh, VR applications. And, I already learned a lot of concept artists utilize also uh, VR for uh, their, yeah, for their block outs. Yeah, yeah, cool, I'll, I'll stick to it. Thank you <laughs> for encouraging. I just, uh, if I might add this, maybe designing uh, spaceships, that's, that's a great way to en en enhance the variety of your, uh, of your models and ideas. So, maybe it's not general VR is the solution to anything. It's always a matter of what you want to design. Um, 
could imagine. Yeah, just I was just thinking loudly. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but but I also liked uh, what what you just said. Like um, yeah, like two D. It's like really um, yeah plain somehow. And also like I I like. Uh, this process when I looking at games and then you know like okay this is the way I, I'm playing the game and then I see like the first concept arts and then you can compare like what of the concept art was really transferred into the final game and um, there once again I would like to to share my screen because Denise also brought something here and I would like to to look at it with you so now we are looking uh, at a concept art for um, yeah, the game Year of Wayne of Didelic. And so what we are seeing right here is a concept art. And like uh, Denise, you are like a 3D artist. So when, mm -hmm. when you get like a concept art, what is a good concept art for you to, to work with as 3D artist? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, when I got this, this concept art, I was a bit... Um, overwhelmed because a lot is going on here. Uh, you have the beast and the tent and bags and there is stuff in the bags and uh, I, I really didn't know at first where to start. And I um, talked with the, with the conceptor and he said, yeah, you know, I, I did it in 3D too. I, I did a block out. And I was like, oh, can you send it please? Um, so um, he gave me his uh, 3D blockout. I mean, it, it was nothing I could really use in the end product, but it helped me a lot to understand how the structure of this uh, asset is. And um, yeah, I, I started slowly from, from uh, the beast because everyone else is on top, right? Um, yeah, and because I had these, this uh, 3D block out concept from from this guy um, I really figured out how I can start and, and the proportions and that was gold worthy really that was really really helpful mm -hmm. and so like this was a, the concept art and now we can also have a look um, like in at the finished 3d model mm. so um, what are like the, the biggest restrictions in saying like, okay, you always would like to add more details and um, like restrictions could be time or performance. So could you give like an idea what could be like the biggest restrictions when thinking about like uh, 3D models for this kind of game? Yeah, um, I mean, also, you in in the three D in the three D asset uh, in the final, you can see a lot is going on there. But it had also a big um, screen size at the end of the game, so it was okay. I, I talked a lot with the art director, um, and he said what to to do and what not. And uh, yeah, I I think it was the hardest thing was that. <laughs> A lot was was going on there, and um, yeah, I, I don't know. It, I think the biggest, yeah, the biggest thing was to to decide what to use from the concept and what not, mm -hmm. and uh, what do I have to make on on symmet symmetry and what uh, can have unique texture. Yeah, it was a, a, a really complex model for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stefan, maybe uh, your perspective, you're working right now on a next gen game, like Kovos is a guy coming out on the, on the next gen consoles. So is there like the other way around that you say like, oh, we have to add more and more and more because it's, it's next gen. And so like it's the, not restrictions, but like the need to really, yeah, doing like this, this super high detailed model. Well, I'm, uh, that might uh, actually that might change soon, but uh, for now uh, polygons are still golden because uh, we might not only come out for the next gen consoles, but there are so many PlayStation 4s and uh, Xbox Xbox Ones on the market right now. So we have to uh, make something like a uh, yeah how how can you call it uh, 
a game for, for both generations, the mm -hmm. actual generation and the next generation. So, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I think uh, everyone saw the uh, PlayStation uh, Sony uh, Unreal Epic 5 demo a few weeks ago where they just made a high poly ZBrush model and threw it in the Unreal Engine and, and that's it. And I was like, man, I was dreaming <laughs> my whole career. I dreamed of this, like making high poly, do, no low poly needed, throw it in the engine and call it a day. So yeah, mm. that might change soon. Mm. Um, also, Denise, like there's a lot of uh, love in the chat for the concept art and for the 3D model. And I think there was also like the question, who did the concept art of what we just saw? Uh, yeah, his name was Jerry or Jeremy. I a minute of fame here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember his last name. Shame on me. But uh, I can figure it out and write it in the chat when you give me a yeah. sec. Yeah, I think like in the games industry, that's a thing with first names, right? Uh, yeah. you, you rarely know like the, the second name. So that's, that's also one thing. Um, and as I said, we, we also want to bring up your questions. I have like millions of questions for, for all our three experts, but maybe I would like to go also to the section of like advices for career starters. And I spotted a question here in the chat um, it was about like how to build up your portfolio. So maybe we can, we can, um, yeah, tackle this question from different perspectives. And I would say, uh, Sören, as a concept artist, so what would be an advice to build up like a good portfolio as a concept artist? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> so first of all i really enjoy to work in a field where we can uh, where we don't need any school grades or something like that we just have the portfolio so that's that's a big advantage i really like this there are many different jobs i have to rearrange my whole portfolio for different needs actually so if i want to apply for a job for a task for an outsourcing company or for a board game or whatever i i really rearrange everything there are these classic rules. I'm, I, as I don't see a lot of portfolios because people don't apply for, uh, my, for me. <laughs> we, we, we will change it today. So at least we will yeah. see three portfolios yeah. today. It's a small room, maybe one intern, I don't know. No. Um, so yeah, put your very best or best fitting uh, piece in front not more than 20 pieces or 10. I don't know the, maybe uh, Denise and uh, Stefan will be, have better answers and one nice one in the end. Mm. Um, but, what, but I, this is, mm. what I would like to add is what I'm interested in uh, for myself is not only showing the super high polished, I work two months on an asset. I also like to see uh, the process or maybe some concepts which didn't work but you figured out a solution uh, to, to handle it mm. so show process that's also mm. cool and also um, my, my questions would be uh, not only about concept art but also 3d art do you have an estimation stefan uh, if it would from your perspective be better to have like five high class um yeah, basically a portfolio items, or is it more like, yeah, put in 20 if, if you have some? Uh, quality over quantity here, I would say. And also make, make sure to not only uh, make a for portfolio for the job that you got, but maybe for the job that you want. So uh, if you want to make fantasy stuff and you love fantasy, put fantasy in, in your uh, portfolio. If you want to be a, a concept artist, do concept artwork. If you want to be a real-time 3D artist for something like Last of Us, maybe you, your dream is to work for a Naughty Dog one day, then make sure that you have the stuff that they really want to see. Like uh, look at artists that work already there, look at their art station portfolios and see uh, have at least a, a handful of pieces that show that you, you are totally hireable. And uh, it's better to have like five good pieces than, than 10 mediocre pieces like 
try try mm. to uh, polish the pieces as as much as you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Denise, maybe um, like a question, is it a good idea if you would like to stand out maybe from other applicants, if you say like, okay, this company has this game and now as an artist, I pick me like this one IP and doing like a specific model or a specific concept art for this game or is it more like a pitfall because like the company has very clear idea how characters have to look like and this could be like the a bad idea do you do you have an opinion on on that yeah i mean it's it's always good to have a, a portfolio piece and when you ap apply for a job um the the company's games um have the same look as this one portfolio piece um but i think it's not necessary necessary because you always have um or in most cases you have art tests. So if, if um, the look is quite, quite likely, it's not exactly the same. Um, uh, yeah, and, and, but your stuff is good in your portfolio. Um, there's always the option to, to, make, a art, to make an art test. Mm -hmm. To and, see if, uh, if mm -hmm. uh, yeah, to see if uh, you can adopt the art style and if you can make it. Mm. Yeah, I can uh, add something to this point just very fast. Um, so if I apply for new, it's now from the perspective of a freelance guy again, but uh, if I apply for new stuff, um, it's also very cool to, if they are paid, <laughs> these art tests. So I don't know, maybe you invest two hours and get uh, some, some money for it. That would be, that's, that's fair. Don't do a, a lot of work for free. It's breaking your neck, <laughs> but um, it also makes me feel comfortable to work on a special task or in a new field. I can challenge myself. I can invest two hours. I show them something rough. They can tell me, okay, nah, that's not going to work. And that's fine like that yeah, mm. so art is not that evil and make sure to keep uh, the properties the intellectual property uh, at your side so if the art test fails you can at least show it in your portfolio mm. and uh, stefan here's also like a, a question in the chat from philip um he asked like should assets be beautied up for the portfolio, like uh, we render them all in the same beauty lighting, or is it good to share like realistic examples and really say like, okay, this was a certain production process and this is how it looks like? Yeah, if, if you want, uh, depends. If you want to show one, one single piece uh, of an asset uh, and you render it in Keyshot or V-Ray or whatever, uh, then uh, it's not a, a it's not a good example for real-time game art because you can throw millions of polygons in there. Make sure to have something like to use something like Marmoset Viewer or embed embed Marmoset Viewer files or SketchUp files or whatever, so that you can uh, have a yeah. Then then you can see actually you can see the mesh and you can see if this guy uh, tricked you or uh, if he really knows his job. That, that's pretty important. I, I don't think you should, for example, uh, make a rendering and maybe then paint over it and sell it as real-time game art because uh, that, that will not work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like we, we already mentioned certain times uh, art station here, I think. And also we realized uh, with all portfolios we got beforehand, it also was a link to art station. Um, like, is it the industry standard or is there anything you're aware of um, which could be better to include, or is it art station simply? Yeah, I, I think we, we can, can we all agree on art station? <laughs> you. Okay. Okay. Art okay. Then, then all uh, of our attendees here with the eight portfolios they sent before, so you're perfectly uh, prepared. Um, I'd like to to add that uh, it's. I'd use ArtStation with caution as well. If you hang up there all day, at least that's the case for me, then uh, I feel just bad because that's top world level artist and uh, 
it's it's okay. actually you compete with the world and the world is best and you never know how much uh, budget timing uh, team effort went into pieces on art station so hmm. good for inspiration but don't do overdo it <laughs> okay that's also good advice so like in certain doses then um yeah so um Annika said there is one more question. Annika, can can you bring it up? Yeah, uh, it's um, a bit late, maybe, um, but it just came in. Uh, how the uh, it's about the art tests, uh, how they work, and how much time you have for those. Because if you have never applied, you have never done those. <laughs> Did any one of you had an art test, like for a job interview or anything like that? Yeah. yeah not. Okay, so what uh, are your um, experience there, Denise? Maybe first. Um, my experience was, it it um, it was a lot of time I had to spend um, for both jobs. I, I had to make uh, for for Tivola, I had to make an animal of my choice, a complete pipeline from low poly unwrapping, texturing, rigging, and animation. Um, and for uh, the Delic, I had to make a an, an, an building for the game I would work in for. Yeah, and both tests um, were, I think Tibula was maybe two weeks and uh, the Delic was one week, mm -hmm. not paid. Okay. So this is also something you mentioned, Sören. So like um, with job interviews, I, I don't really see like a big chance to say like um, you, you get this paid after it. Um, but, but how are your yeah. experiences on that? I think I mixed it up as well. So like Denise mentioned, when I was, uh, when I applied for the ANO team, they really wanted to make sure that it's a, that's a fit. And uh, they don't uh, hire people just for fun to see if they can work. So I did an artist for them as well. I think it was not two weeks. Well, that's quite a time. <laughs> yep. Um, but I invested a lot of time because I wanted to, to work for them. But nowadays, I think uh, some tasks to get, uh, you can do much faster because uh, you're more experienced as well. But I uh, recommend if it's if it's just for a job or a freelance job, and they are not sure if you are the right hit, uh, one two hours very fast, put some colors on. If it's not finished, uh, yeah, hmm. maybe say 150 euro. That's that would be my my guess. Hmm. But for free, that's always a thing, and it yeah. would not the first time that assets which were created in an art test end up in games <laughs> in the end. Um, so, yes, a fo follow up, if I may, just may, is it's just the question if the company keeps the asset and uses it even if you don't get the job. I think they are not allowed to do that. Yeah, I, I also would say like this, this is not um, worse it like basically if you have like the yeah, position of the company because like there there might be like real huge pitfalls if you're not like the, the owner of that so I also would assume that. Um, Stefan can you share like with Deep Silver Fish Labs are you running some kind of art test or could you share like something about the job interview process which you are doing? Yeah, uh, we did art tests, for example, for State of Mind, we gave out art tests to the people, uh, just uh, a concept art, and then we wanted, uh, because it was a low poly, it was not uh, super uh, time consuming for the artist, so we said, hey, here, here's the concept, and uh, send us your, uh, your solution back, how, how you solved this, and uh, then, then we could make a decision on that. Uh, mm -hmm. For for Deep Silver right now, we're we're doing art tests for some concept artists where we're not a hundred percent sure. Where we know these are very good artists, we would love to work with them, but maybe the style does not fit. Maybe they have no sci-fi in their portfolio, stuff like that. And then mm -hmm. we 
about blockouts uh, from existing uh, space stations, for example, we, we send them the blockouts and ask them to do an overpay, again, to not waste their time. Or, and then, then uh, if we have a few concept artists where we're not 100% uh, sure uh, if they, they uh, fit our style, then uh, we send them all the same blockout and then we can really like, well, this, this, this one here, he nailed it or mm. yeah, we can choose. And is there a time usually uh, how long they, they have time to complete like the test? Usually about, about a week. Yeah, mm -hmm. because uh, they, they, it's not a week full time because an overpaint can be done in one evening mm. uh, or two evenings, but it's like uh, so, some are parents and have, have little children or some, some have other things to do or other jobs. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, but it shouldn't be like a two weeks full time job for them. I think that's a little bit too much ask of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sören, uh, did you also want to add something? I, I think we don't have sound, uh, Sören, at the moment. Maybe that's because I pressed the mute button. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question for, um, for Stefan. I always think that, that the whole concept art, at least concept art, uh, is not about being the second Rembrandt or Dürer. So it's not about the, the whole finishing level of concept art. Is it also about uh, ideas or visual communication that you can sell an idea? What do you think of this? Yeah, it, it depends. If, if you're looking for someone that can do key artworks uh, to sell your products, uh, you want someone that is very good and polishing the, the shit out of the piece but <laughs> i i'm a person i love uh, sloppy rough sketches where you really get a lot of ideas but also on the other hand a lot of freedom of uh, interpretation uh, how things work because if as an artist if you get something that is rendered uh, like everything every little screw is already rendered there's no room as a 3d artist uh, to to bring yourself in it's like you're a machine you produce what you see so I, I love rougher sketches that sell the uh, broad strokes, but uh, it depends. It always depends on, on the project, I would say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Um, so yeah, wh what are like other important aspects? We already tackled like portfolio, um, had some tips there. Also we, we tackled like, um, yeah, maybe tests which could come up there. Is there anything you feel like, despite like the graphical assets you provide there, is there anything you feel it is important to express in your like, um, yeah, like if you apply for a job, what what should be in in, in a cover letter, or is there something um, where you feel this is um, yeah something people might forget. Um, Stefan, do you have yeah, something? We, we mind talked there? about this already last week. So uh, make sure your portfolio is uh, easy accessible and uh, put in all the necessary information. Uh, what was your career so far? The games you worked on? And if you did not work on any games, uh, then uh, send, uh, a, of course, always send a link to your portfolio, of course. And don't, don't uh, because we get a lot of portfolios and Sometimes we have something like a JPEG and we have to type in the address and that's, that's a killer. So make, make your portfolio accessible, easy accessible. Don't be too fancy with your application. So uh, we had some graphic design uh, stuff going on there that was really like we opened it uh, and it was like, whoa, he, he was designing a lot. Uh, and that's, that's not the point. So make it easy readable easy, understandable, accessible. That's, I mm. think that's a good way to yeah. do it. Okay. Um, I know that we have like one uh, other nice thing we, we haven't looked at, um, but maybe uh, Stefan, uh, you already mentioned it, like there, there are these different kind of viewers to show like 3D models. Um, maybe you can share with us, um, yeah, what you brought there 
uh, from from the latest game you're working on. Okay, let me share my screen here. All right. So I hope you guys can see it. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah, th this is uh, a program that's called Marmoset. Uh, a lot of 3D artists use it to showcase uh, their, their pieces. It's also, uh, you can also embed it in ArtStation, for example, or on your, on your personal website, wherever. But you can also send uh, the viewer file over to clients to see, uh, so they can really see the 3D asset and it's pretty close to what they can expect in game. So here we have a, a 3D asset from the model that I rendered in VR. And uh, this is the polished uh, game asset that I did here. And if, if you want, you can maybe look, uh, oh, are, are the normal maps working? Uh, how about that? Or I want to see uh, the topology of this piece. And then I can say, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's low poly, it's a game asset. Or, or is it like, is it more high poly? Uh, is it matching the poly count that we are looking for, maybe? Yeah, and it gives you a very, very good uh, first impression of, of the game asset. And it's shareable, even if you don't have Unreal Engine installed. Oh, that's good for clients too. They, they can download uh, the Marmoset viewer for free. That, that takes a minute and then uh, they can open your game assets and meshes. Mm -hmm. Uh, there, there was a question in the chat. Uh, it was about um, Stefan. Where did you make the high poly? Asked by Mark. Uh, yeah, that that's a very good question because I did not do a high poly for this one. I I used a trick. So uh, if we look close, uh, all all the edges they are slightly softened, like they are beveled. But they are actually not. I just made a low poly and I did something that is called low poly uh, bevel baking, around edge baking, sorry. Uh, I used Blender for that one. Uh, I made a low poly and a shader technique bevels all the edges, rounds and smooths all the small edges. And uh, I baked this into normal map information, which I utilized in Substance Painter later. So it saved me days of work for, for this one. That really sounds like a clever idea. I'm completely out of the topic right now. I, I have absolutely no, no idea. <laughs> Very technical, I, I agree, yeah. But, but uh, th th that's good. And also I like, like to, to look at it. Um, yeah, but maybe, um, yeah, I, I would like to, to open up once again into uh, the round. So are there any more like general questions we, we haven't tackled yet? So here's one more specific question on, on the model. So how big uh, is the texture? Do you have an idea there, Stefan? How big is the texture of the 3D yeah, model? Um, sorry, there, there are more texture sets. Um, because this is also our cinematic model, so uh, and our hero asset, we will see it in 4K resolution uh, when you go for Xbox One X or something like that, and we, we use it for in-game cinematics as well. So I split it up in I think uh, four texture sheets, which are sourced, which is which means you go for the highest texture imported into the game engine. And when your uh, device cannot play the highest texture, you go down to lower texture re resolution. So we sourced it with 4K textures. But in game, if, if it's small, you will just have four 1K textures, for example. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, I think here's another question coming up. Um, yeah, maybe Denise, uh, how do you brainstorm projects for your portfolio? Um, can you use tutorials? So, so how are you coming up with what you're gonna to do? So I think we, we had like the idea of how, please use this uh, fields which you would like to work on, but do you have other things where you think like, okay, something is missing? How, how do you know what to add to your portfolio? Uh, how do I know? Um, it's more for me, it's more like a feeling um, or I, I usually do things in my portfolio 
um, which I have fun with. So if I have, um, if I want to do a character, I, I, I do some research, what character do I want, um, in which art style, and I'm doing a, maybe a little concept for it. Um, yeah, when I, when I want to apply for a specific company, I think I would, um, I would uh, yeah, do something in the art style of the game that company develops. Um, but always keep in mind that I, I would do something where you have fun with. It shouldn't mm. be something you, you don't have the motivation to do it to the end. Yeah, um, and use tutorials. I mean, complete tutorials. Uh, so the end product is the exact, exact same way as the tutorial. It's nothing I would recommend, I think, um, but you can maybe change uh, some things that you see in the tutorial. Um, do your own stuff, but with the advice of the tutorial. Yeah. Hmm. Um. And Sören, like when working uh, as a concept artist, I often wonder, like, um, yeah, is, is there a tension between sometimes like what a game needs um, as a concept artist and like what marketing needs? Like, uh, are you also often doing like concept art, which you're aware which should be used for, for especially marketing? Or is it more like the case, okay, um, please, um, give us like an idea of what the 3D should look like. Yeah, so I think it depends really on the task and on the briefing, because actually in every task you, you will have a I don't know, PDF file where everything will be uh, broke down, breaking down, broke down, whatever. For marketing artworks, usually there's a very, very narrow gap uh, or path you 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 could follow because they want a certain specific style. Same for um, building concepts. But for example, the stuff you saw from uh, Ghost Recon just, just uh, recently, I think these are very, very early concepts. Um, at that matter of time, it's, it's not yet defined, or at least I didn't know about it, which uh, engine would be used, which materials can be can be there, uh, how shiny can we do a white marble texture? Um, things like this are not uh, yet defined or I, I, don't, I just didn't know them. So mm. that's actually what I like about being concept artist that I can just show things how I like them, how I would enjoy them. And in the end, uh, it's a compromise between technique, marketing, iterations, different aspects. Maybe 30 people did over paintings over my uh, first uh, um, concept there. So mm -hmm. definitely depends. Uh, I enjoy working in pre-production -pre so I can just define how I like to see the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I heard, Annika, there's another question. Yeah, it's an older one from the beginning of the event that I wrote down. Um, it's from someone who just finished their bachelor, congratulations, by the way. And uh, they already did an internship in Hamburg in animation and are quite unsure how to go from that. So what the next steps to get into the industry could be for them. Um, yeah, Stefan, do you have a perspective? What could be like a good next step there? Yeah, if, re if you already did an internship, um, maybe the company wants you to stay there. That, that's one uh, option. Or maybe there you worked on something that you can show. If you cannot show uh, something because it's under NDA or will be released years from now, uh, always make sure uh, when it comes to situations like this, uh, to have in your contract uh, something like uh, that you are able to show your work at least after a release or something like that. That's very important for artists, I think, in general. Yeah, uh, or you have to do stuff in your, in your free time, in your spare time. So uh, I, I do a lot of 
uh, my portfolio stuff I do in, in my spare time. So uh, it's not uh, work that I do uh, in the companies most of the time. It's more like what I do uh, af after, uh, after the working day. Mm -hmm. And is it the case then if you have like this in your contract that it's often like, okay, I can show the asset or the artwork, but I simply don't name the game so that I don't say what the title was? Always make sure uh, to, to be on the, on the right side here, on the safe side. So um, if, if you're working on a game that comes out, I don't know, three years later, then you will have to wait most of the time. You will have to wait for the art dump of the game or or uh, say, after, or, or you can, uh, it's always uh, negotiable, I think. You can say, okay, when I leave the company, uh, one year later, I can show at least the stuff I worked on. It's always about negotiation here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so one question, which I like very, very much, uh, I would also like to ask all three of you and, and maybe start with Denise. Um, so is there something you would have liked to know before you entered the industry as a game artist? Mm, good question. Um, no, <laughs> because everything, um, everything I made or everything I knew um, reaches to the point where I am now and I'm quite happy. So I, I don't know, um, but of course it's always good to, to, um, to learn new things, to, um, to know all the things I know now <laughs> would have helped me, of course, um, in the beginning. Yeah, it's always a process of learning. Um, yeah, but I can't uh, tell you an ex exact advice give you an exact ad advice in this. Mm -hmm. is, is there any shortcut or exploit Zorin which you realized, which could be useful? No, shortcut I wouldn't say, but I mentioned in the beginning that it's so, some smaller things, I guess. So um, I figured out that there is something like entertainment industry or concept art, little late, not of course not too late, but a little late, I in a world which is com not, not completely, but filled pretty much with entertainment everywhere. Um, that I would love to have uh, to, to to know it before, so that I could focus a little earlier and uh, so on. And another thing is, I already mentioned it as well. Don't look on ArtStation on Instagram too much don't get affected by uh, likes or followers or something like that. That's, that's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, you can feel distracted or bad if you do it all the time. I pretty rarely look at these uh, stuff uh, at these websites. Mm. More often I look at my own portfolio and say, ah, good. Okay. <laughs> I did this and that's fine. I don't have to be the world's best artist. It's completely fine to be number 500,867 and 12th, at least as you can pay your rent. And that's, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you, you, you can do what you love and what you like. So that's, that's, yes. that's all. So, so besides all the job, I have uh, board game stuff and fantasy uh, books also. Video games are by, by far the, the most preferable jobs for me. Mm -hmm. uh, Stefan, do you have anything in mind which you could give like uh, as an advice for career starters? Yeah, I'm, I'm reading Be Your Own Best Artist here right now. I love this comment. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would say uh, um, tutorials are, are super helpful because if, you, uh, if you're looking for uh, tutorials on YouTube, you will find a lot. But if there's a paid tutorial and you can have access to all the information that you want yeah. immediately and it costs 50 bucks that's nothing come on uh, do it uh, otherwise you can wait uh, you can waste three or four more months and you will still be looking up youtube tutorials if there is a tutorial if it, even if it's paid grab it uh, and be better right now 
because everyone else, there's a lot of competition out there. Everyone else will do this tutorial and uh, they are better immediately. And you are still wasting your time because you don't want to spend like 50 bucks. Do tutorials. Hmm. Okay, that's, that's also a good point. Like that's always, um, yeah, you have to stay up to date somehow. Uh, and also like, um, yeah, deciding like the next steps you, you want to learn. Um, yeah, I would like um, to, to look once again in direction of our yeah, participants here. If there are any more questions. So this is your opportunity, your chance to ask whatever you, you had in mind or Annika also, if there are any questions from uh, earlier today, which we should bring up. Yeah, there's once again, like a question, um, is there any type of a typical work day? Um, yeah, Sören, I think you, you didn't um, answer this question. Is there a typical eight hours work day for you? Uh, yes, actually, uh, yes, but I know a lot of uh, artists who uh, who do it their own way. So some people like to work at night, some people like to work in the afternoon. I like to work in the morning. So I don't uh, put my alarm on six and go jogging and then have my, uh, no, that's not the case, but yeah. I really like to finish the most creative part in the first four hours so that I can send out the first batch at 2 p.m., have some lunch break and then see if feedback is there or if I play World of Tanks, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good routine there. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, maybe uh, Denise, uh, did you dream of becoming a game artist in childhood or when did you decide this would be a good good option for you? Yeah, I uh, no, I, um, I didn't dream of it because I didn't knew that uh, those jobs are existing. Um, for a long time, I, I always said, I want to do something creative. I want to do something with media. I don't know what exactly. And one day someone said, yeah, there, you know, there are artists that make games. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is, uh, this is right. And, um, I do, did, uh, did some research on the internet and I thought it, this is quite cool. I guess I was 16 or 70 around that. And um, once I've heard about it, yeah, it, it was my dream job. Yeah. Okay, now we're coming to the good questions here. So uh, Philip, thank you also for the question, what is the internet? Um, we, we will also tackle this. <laughs> Um, but but uh, before that, there was one more specific question from uh, Julian. Uh, what do you put into an online contact formula if there is just a free text field and no one you can call or ask directly? So my idea of this question is that you are asking um, if you want to apply for a job, um, what you should highlight. But maybe I get you totally wrong. So you can also unmute you and uh, ask a question. Um, but Stefan, what do you put into an online contact formula to apply for a job? Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm, Stefan Wack, uh, I'm Stefan Wacker and I want to apply at your company or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Julian, I'm also not completely sure um, what contact formula yeah, 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 yeah. And also, and knowing a person and a company you want to work for doesn't make you get the job. So the, uh, it could be a little bonus. Um, when uh, I do my uh, new acquisition uh, month, I write about 50 emails to companies I'm interested in. And I think I will end up in the what is it, garbage can uh, in the waste 80% um, of the time. 10% maybe are interested, 1% answers. And maybe sometimes we have a lucky hit and they answer, wow, that's perfect. That's a perfect fit, perfect timing, perfect moment. Would you be interested in blah, blah, blah. So 
knowing a person does it make it better i know yeah. this from from walking around on uh, exhibitions or fairs for board game industry where i gather like 50 business cards of people and you just write them but 300 other people write them as well so it takes sometimes half a year to answer one guy personally because it's mailbox is completely tied up yeah Okay, perfectly. Um, then at this point, I really would like to like end the official part and maybe also uh, stop like uh, our record here and then uh, yeah, going over to like the cozy part with some uh, portfolio checks. So um, at this point, thank you very much uh, for the panel, for the discussion.